Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel Clinical Cases Simplified. So it's been a long time since I last uploaded the video. I'll try to be more regular from now on. So in today's video, we are going to discuss some flashcards. Now flashcards come under a technique known as space repetition that is proven by science to enhance retention power or memory. So let's jump right in. So on one side of the flashcard, you're going to see a typical clinical presentation you're going to encounter in a patient or a case study or clinical vignette type of question. And on the other side of the flashcard, what we have is the diagnosis or disease associated. Please pause the video and try to figure out the answer yourself before I reveal it on the flashcard. Let's begin. So on our fl first flashcard, we have hyporeflexia, hypotonia, atrophy and fasciculations. The diagnosis is lower motor neuron damage. Ne next, resting tremor, athetosis and chorea. The diagnosis is any basal ganglia lesion. Moving on to our next flashcard, pink complexion, dyspnea and hyperventilation. The answer is emphysema. Now these patients are also known as pink puffers because they breathe with their pursed lips and most commonly we have centriacinar emphysema and panacinar emphysema. Now centriacinar emphysema is most commonly associated with smoking and panacinar is associated with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency that is congenital cause. Moving on to our next flashcard. Hypoxemia polycythemia and hypercapnia. The diagnosis is chronic bronchitis. On histopathology, we see hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the mucus cells and these people are also known as blue bloaters. So the emphysematous patients are known as pink puffers and chronic bronchitis patients are known as blue bloaters. Next, chorea dementia and chordate degeneration. The answer is Huntington's disease. Now this is an autosomal dominant disease that is caused by CAG repeat expansions. Next, this is a pretty easy flashcard. Resting tremor, rigidity, akinesia, postural instability, shuffling gait and micrographia. Yes, the diagnosis is Parkinson's disease. It is caused by loss of dopaminergic neurons in substantia nigra pars compacta. Note that it is substantia nigra pars compacta and not pars reticularis. Next, ataxia, nystagmus, vertigo and dysarthria. The diagnosis is a cerebellar lesion. Now, lateral cerebellar lesion affects voluntary movements of extremities while the medial cerebellar lesions affect axial and proximal movements. Moving on to our next flashcard, cervical lymphadenopathy, these vomiting rash, coronary aneurysms, red conjunctivae and tongue and hand and foot changes. The answer is Kawasaki disease. It is also known as mucocutaneous lymph node syndrome that is treated with intravenous immunoglobulins in high dose aspirin. Moving on to our next flashcard butterfly facial rash, arthritis, cytopenia, and fever in a young female. The answer is systemic lupus erythematosus or SLE. Next, red or pink urine in the morning and fragile RBCs. What is it suggestive of? The answer is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. So th these are the today's flashcard. We are done with it. Now 
In order to get the full benefits of the flashcard, I recommend you to put a reminder on the phone to review this video again. I'd like you to put the reminder at the interval of 4 days, then 8 days, then 23 days and finally 33 days. This will enhance the retention and it will engrave these points in your memory so that when you solve a question or see a patient, you can recall all of the facts at the back of your mind. Now, if you didn't get it right the first time, so you can review it again at the interval of 4 days and if you still didn't get it right at the 4, uh, four days review uh, interval, you can again uh, review the information on the flashcards in 4 days. And it also doesn't take much time to review the flashcards. Please hit the like button if you like the video. Stay tuned for more content. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon.